Well, hello, Gathering Place family. Um, so glad to bring the word to you today. I really believe God has something that he wants to say to us. And so uh, I want you to open up your Bible with me. And just like we're in church together, face to face, I want you to follow along. If you feel like God is speaking to you and there's somewhere you want to agree with, you just shout out amen or maybe type it into the little chat box. Uh, take notes, get your Bible out with me follow along. If I'm asking for a response, you know, you give a response, but let's engage like we're here face to face. I want to look at the scripture with you from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And it's a familiar passage to us all, probably one that you've gone to many times to bring you hope. Let's read it together out loud from the New King James Version. Now there's a lot of great versions, but for the sake of us all reading along and using the same words, let's read it here from the screen. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I love this verse for a couple reasons. One is God is thinking about us. The whole idea that with everything going on, you're on his mind, that tells me a lot. It tells us about how important we are towards, to, to God. And in the thoughts that he thinks towards us, He lets us know they're not of evil. They're not to harm us. They're of peace. They're to do us good. And when we read the scripture, we have encouragement. Now, imagine this. The people who were hearing these words spoken for the very first time were in a tough situation. It's the children of Israel that this word came to. And they were in bondage. They were in captivity. They had been carried off from their land. And they were isolated, sort of on a quarantine in Babylon. And this was a long time. It was a long period, far longer than they expected. In fact, many people were saying, oh, it's going to be over. It's going to be over. But God brought a word to them through Jeremiah the prophet saying, it's going to last a while. It's going to last a while. And when things start to drag on like this, people start to lose hope. They start to give up. Now, to give you a little background of why they were there in the first place. I mean, there's a number of reasons why they were there. If you read the story through the Old Testament, you see that though God sent them prophets, he sent them priests, he sent them kings, their hearts continued to turn away from God and go after other gods. They grew complacent in their faith. They even began to worship idols. And then they ultimately turned their back on the Lord. But actually, there's more to it than just that. In 2 Chronicles 36, 21, it says this, that the land enjoyed its Sabbath rest all the time of its desolation. It rested until the 70 years were completed in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. So Jeremiah came and he brought a prophetic word and he said, this is going to last longer than you think. It's actually going to last 70 years. And the scripture right here points out something specific about why it took 70 years. It took 70 years so that the land would be able to have a divine reset, so that the land would make up for all the Sabbaths that God said the children of Israel should give the land. Here's the idea with this here. In Leviticus chapter 25, verse 2 through 4, it says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, Then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you sow in your field. Six years you shall prune your vineyard, gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. A Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. And so God said every six years you're to work. Seventh year, you just let the land rest. Now imagine this. If you're out there working year after year and you're depending on that harvest, God is saying, but in the seventh year, you're going to let the land rest. So you're not going to go work the land. And then you know what that means? Because you didn't work the land in that year, you don't have a harvest for that year. And then the next time you work it is the following year you plant, but then it delays the harvest time. So there's about a two year gap before the harvest starts to produce. And what God is saying to his people is, I'll provide for you if you do it my way. I will cause you to have supernatural increase. Well, the children of Israel, they didn't do this. And the scripture tells us that for 490 years, they didn't do this at all. And so as a result of that, uh, not giving the land the Sabbath, 
That's why God said, okay, but for 70 years, I'm going to put you into Babylon to give that land rest. So you get one out of the seven years for 490 years. That's why it equals out to 70. I know it's a little early to be doing math. Some people say, we don't math on quarantine. Well, God was mathing on their quarantine here, and they took 70 years of rest. Now, they were isolated during that time. Jeremiah 25, 11 says, This whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. So that's just where you get the 70 years. Nevertheless, here's the children of Israel. They're stuck in this place, and it's lasting a whole lot longer than they anticipated. But yet God sent a prophet to him to speak words of encouragement and hope. And that's what we find in Jeremiah 29, 11. But I want you to, to catch something because that's not the only verse that we should look at. In fact, I want to ask you, let's go back a little bit earlier in the chapter in the beginning of this word of the Lord. If you look at verse 5, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 5, look at this. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away, captive and pray to the Lord for it for in its peace you will have peace I want to encourage you with a couple things from this passage and we'll read a little bit more in a moment but the very first point I have for you is this we've got to learn to accept the current reality this has already taken longer than any of us were hoping for and it looks like it's going to extend for quite a bit more time currently our president has extended this time of rest here in uh, slowing the spread for another 30 days. I heard that in some states they've extended it another 70 days. The reality is we don't know how long it's going to last, but this is the situation that we are in. In the situation that the children of Israel was in, it was going to last longer than they wanted as well. And that's when God said, you've got to accept this is your current reality. So build houses where you're at. Plant vineyards where you're at in captivity. I want you to, to begin to live your life and set, uh, set your expectations that you're going to be here for a while, but nevertheless, don't lose hope. Now is a time for hope. Now is it not a time for despair. Now is not a time to give up. And verse 7 said this, Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away and pray for, to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. Now is the time for us to pray. Now is the time for us to seek the Lord. Because God is saying in the midst of this time of captivity or isolation or quarantine or what, however you would, you would uh, term it, God is saying in, in its peace you'll have peace. So you can't change what's going on out there, but you can, you can change what's going on in here. And so God is saying this, that in the midst of this situation, I want to give you peace. I want to give you peace. Again, we don't know how long it's going to last, but as long as it lasts, God will be there right by your side and he'll give you the peace. He'll also tell you what to do. Just like he told them, hey, build houses, plant vineyards. He's not leaving you on your own, nor is he wanting to leave you comfortless, nor is he wanting to, to make things difficult on you. In fact, he's saying, I want to take care of you during this time. The second point is this, uh, now is the time to prepare for the future. Know that this too shall pass. Now is the time during this divine reset, this time of rest or quarantine, it's not a time to worry about what's going to happen. In fact, it's a time to plan and prepare for the future. In verse 7 he, or verse 6, he told the children of Israel, take wives, have sons, have daughters, have Take son, uh, wives for your sons and, and husbands for your daughters. Encourage them to have kids. In other words, he's saying, you plan for the future. Having children now, and then they're going to be growing up. Encourage them to marry, have children. In other words, there is a future and a hope that God has for you. And if you give up now and you stop planning and preparing for the future, then you know what's going to happen? The future is going to come and you're going to be left out. 
You're going to miss out on the opportunities. You won't be able to take advantage of what God has for you. So even to us right now, he's saying, plan and prepare for the future. And look at this. This is a, a part of the verse that is so important. In verse 6, he says, so that you may be increased there and not diminished. God doesn't want you to be diminished during this time. This isn't a time for the people of God to lose out. This is a time for us to be increased. God even said to his people who were carried away into captivity because of their own fault. And he's saying, yet even then, I want to sustain you. Even then, I want to cause you to grow. Even then, I want to cause you to advance. Even then, I want to cause you to increase. What a great God we have. Now, God has a history of causing his people to flourish in times of adversity. And you've got to understand this. Even when you read back to Exodus chapter 1, you see the children of Israel, they're in the land of Egypt. And uh, it, it turned into a, a, a place where they're flourishing, they're doing well. But the Egyptians, they saw that and they got scared. And they said, we need to oppress them and push them down because they're mightier than us. In fact, chapter 1 verse 11 of Exodus says, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. But the next verse says, But they, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. You see, well, where others will be broken during times like this, that's not how it's going to turn out for you. You're going to multiply. You're going to grow. God will set, uh, set apart his people from those who are outside and those that don't know him and don't, they don't trust him. God is going to cause you to multiply and grow. So now is the time to prepare for that. Don't think that this is it. Don't think you're going under. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And when it does, you're going to come out stronger than ever before. But look at this next verse as well. When you get to verses 12 through 14 of Jeremiah 29, it says, Then you will call upon me, and you will go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And, I will, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Look at this here. God says, accept your current reality. This is the situation you're in, but it's only temporary. Because two, you need to prepare for the future. This too will pass. But what do you do in the meantime? You seek the Lord and you seek him with all your heart. Look at that. He said in verse 12, then you will call upon me and go pray. When is the then? When? Well, that came right after verse 11 when he said, I, I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope. You begin to seek God right now because you have received words of a future and of a hope. That's when you do it. After he gives the promise of a future and a hope. That's what we're to be doing right now, church family. Right now is the time for us to be uh, coming before the Lord, filling our heart and our mind with the word of God, building our faith, listening to faith building messages. It's a time for us to be praying. It's also a time for us to be planning and preparing and examining. Okay, God, what do you want to do in my life? It's a time for us to be reaching out to our friends, our neighbors. Time for us to all be making the phone calls to one another in our church. We can't see each other face to face necessarily, but we can still have that personal connection. Now is the time for us to be making preparation for what's to come. You know, God is doing a new thing. In fact, when Julia and I were first installed here and we began to talk to the congregation, we brought up this verse from Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, where God said, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When I look at this now, compared to when we first brought this, you know, this passage up, which was only about a month ago, I see so many new insights into it. Of course, God is calling us, hey, don't, don't look to the, the former things. We are entering into a new normal. Things will return to normal, but it will be a new normal for us. Things, life will get back into another, uh, a new rhythm. 
and you will start to function again in you know jobs school you know none of the kids are excited about the school maybe but uh you know going out and seeing friends and being in church and, and going back to the gym and so forth we'll get back to that eventually but god is saying that there's a new normal he is doing a new thing and when i look at this he said now it shall spring forth man when we when we uh, read that verse and we were declaring that verse knowing that God is saying he's doing a new thing uh, we had no idea that this is what it would look like now I'm not saying that God brought COVID I'm saying God is doing a new thing in the midst of that and he is resetting so much in our lives right now he's resetting the way church does ministry as church we are reminded it's more than Sunday it's not about the Sunday service only but it's about the life-giving relationships. That's where our strength is. That's where our network is. That's what builds us up. It's about being able to bring Jesus into your home. And even as I speak these words across the United States and around the world on Sunday mornings, so many more people are bringing the ministry into their homes more than ever before in the history of the world. That's a powerful thought. God is doing something new. And when this season passes, there's so much of this new thing that God is doing that we're going to hold on to as well. And so we'll get into uh, normal, but it'll be a new normal. It will look different. It'll look different for our church. It'll look different for your family, but it will be good and it will be better. Here's probably my favorite part of this verse, and this is what I want to close out with. And verse 10, in fact, if you look on, on the screen here or look in your Bible, it says this. Let's all read it out loud together. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. God is saying, I will perform my good word toward you. That is a word of hope. All the things that God has said, everything promise that he's made, he's keeping it. And he swore in his own blood on the cross to fulfill his word he said i will perform my good word toward you there are some of you you're struggling right now with peace you're struggling right now with your financial situation and, and and there's concerns or maybe even you know you get a little sneeze or something it might be allergies but is it covid you know all of these things that can come into our mind and yet god is saying forget about all of that put this right here front and center I will perform my good word towards you. And then this other part of the verse that I love, and I'll bring you back to this place. That's why I'm bringing this word to you from the sanctuary here today. Because while I'm super excited to be in your living room and, and being able to connect this way, I believe God is looking forward as well to bringing us back to this place. There will be a time in the near future where we'll all be able to come together, worship under one roof, We'll be able to give each other the hugs and high fives and, and just look each other in the eye and, and see each other face to face. And it'll be a time of celebration and rejoicing. Some of you I know are watching from way far away and, and you won't do that here at, at the gathering place, but you'll do it at whatever church that you're part of. But understand this, that God has a future and a hope for us. And specifically to our gathering place family, I want you to know he's going to bring us back to this place and he's going to do the miraculous. He's going to build us up. Those who have been on the edges, on, you know, they've maybe even strayed away or fallen away. God's bringing them back. Your sons, your daughters, he's bringing them back. The young families, he's bringing them back. Those who have turned away from Jesus, he's bringing them back. Those who have been hurt by the church, he, it, he is bringing them back. It's a time of restoration and he's doing a new thing. And even now, I want to invite you, be praying and be planning and preparing for God to do a new thing right here through this ministry. Well, I love you so much, and, and I want you to stick around with the video because we're going to be hosting some time face-to-face. Uh, -face. There'll be some more information on that, but let me pray for you before we go. Father God, I thank you for each and every person listening and watching. I thank you, Lord God, that you speak to us, that you let us know that you're thinking about us. I thank you, Lord God, that even for those who might be far away from you in their heart, that you would bring them back to you now. Lord, you're our provider, our protector, our healer. Lord God, you're our future. 
We look to you, Jesus. And now, Lord God, I pray for somebody out there who might not know you as their Lord and Savior, or maybe they haven't been walking with you. If that's you, I want to encourage you right now. Just say something like this along with me. Jesus, I want to give my life to you. I know you died on the cross for me because you love me. You forgave me of all my sins there. And you rose from the dead to give me new life. Jesus, I do place my trust in you. Will you forgive me? Will you give me a fresh start today? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, that's all I have for you today. I know God has so much more for you. I want to let you know again, I love you and I can't wait to see you face to face.